Hey, well, good uh, Saturday morning to you, friends. Yeah, Doc South here. Another episode of Millie's Itinerary. Boy, I tell you, we uh, we had ourselves one heck of a yeah rain last night. I think the Musconet Kung's about, except for Hurricane Sandy, I think it's about as high as I've seen it. Yeah, pretty. Uh, it's up there. It's up way over the old dead tree that washed ashore <laughs> a while back. Uh, maybe that will get caught up by the current and head a little closer to the ocean. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Either way, yeah, I guess not doing any harm where it sits, but boy. Maybe later, if I get a chance, I'll try to get a picture of the river for you. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I can. It's Actually, it looks a little mushy down there right now. Anyway, Millie's itinerary is what we're up to. By the way, if you haven't, uh, th this is uh, basically what I'm going to do is a daily reading from a book I wrote. Uh, it's not in book form, but I don't have the money, but it's, uh, I'm going to read it as a, you know, a, 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 what would you call it? Sort of a cyber story hour. Uh, yeah, for folks, a chapter or a segment at a time till we're done. Uh, it's going to take about two months to get to the end of this. There's quite a few segments. And it's basically a day in the life of our Basset Hound, Millie. Right. Okay. And again, started about a week ago. So you'd want to go back to late October. You should see all the various things. It'll always say Millie's itinerary and then just follow it. It's basically done... Uh, you know, Millie's itinerary, 604 in the morning, part one. Yeah, it'll be easy to, yeah, know you're at the right spot. Okay. In fact, uh, speaking of that, here we go. Millie's itinerary, 606 a.m., part one. Ready? Okay. I may be wrong, but I seem to remember hearing from my granddad about how during World War I, the opposing sides would initiate pre-dawn gas raids. Infantry soldiers, lucky enough to be alert and awake, were able to warn their comrades and also save themselves in the process. From what I gather, the gas would simply roll low across no man's land and, and seep into the trenches and bunkers. The noxious clouds meant certain death to anyone caught unawares. The suffering would have been unbearable. Millie, our hound, must have been a World I soldier back in a, a past life. Millie's big meal of the day is served around noontime. This means that her main meal of kibble, chicken noodle soup, cheddar cheese, baked chicken, and leftovers has roughly 18 hours to ferment in that big old belly of hers. Uh, her daily intake of snacks and like leftover meatballs, fig bars, cheese crackers, fish sticks, and ice cream can only, be, uh, can only add to the pre-dawn gurgling below her belt if you catch my drift. <laughs> Later, this will make for torment in our humble bungalow. Just before sunrise, our vine-covered love nest transforms into something more like a bunker or machine gun nest overlooking no man's land uh, than it does a cottage, a humble cottage. Yeah, Just prior to dawn, before reveille, a silent but deadly cloud will form a foot or so above our little fur ball. Yep. Uh, silently, it slithers, uh, uh, her, uh, it slithers up past her tail and rolls across the carpet like a fog across the bay. With a life of its own, this cloud of silent but deadly gas then seeps slowly into the nooks and crannies of our tiny bungalow. You never hear it coming. No, no. There's nowhere to hide. Fleas, spiders, and mice are powerless and can only be seen dropping in their tracks. Their tiny little screams of anguish are all they have left before it's lights out. Sandy and I have a running agreement that whoever is awakened by the initial whiff must at all costs alert the other to the looming danger and torment of the approaching SBD cloud. Just like old faithful guys are out at Yellowstone Park, we can set our watches by that first fatal whiff. If for some reason the power goes out overnight, we can reset the clocks easily enough thanks to our hound. At night, just before hitting the sack, Sandy and I will share a hug and, and then whisper to one another, see you at 606. Be brave. By the way, Sandy proofread this segment the other day and said how Millie got this pre-dawn habit from me. Uh, the charges, by the way, are completely false. I'm just saying. All right. Huh. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, <laughs> if you have a dog, you know what I mean. Right. You never hear it coming. Okay. 
Well, okay, friends, that's a wrap for now. We'll do another one tomorrow.